What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another episode of the new PS4 Jailbreak tutorial series. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to install games, DLC and updates onto your jailbroken PS4. If you haven't watched any of the previous episodes, check them out. There's a playlist link down in the video description and in the cards in the top right hand corner. The first video shows you how to fully jailbreak your PS4 from start to finish. This video obviously already assumes that you've done that by now. So let's get into this. So the first thing I'm going to do is switch on over to the computer. And as you can see, I've got a piece of DLC here downloaded for Black Ops 3. I'm just doing this as an example because it's quite small. So basically, when you download a game, now I'm not going to be showing you, of course, where you can go to download games for reasons which are hopefully going to be quite obvious. But essentially, when you download a game, it's going to either come as the full package file, the full game, or it's going to come compressed in some kind of zip format, like a zip file, a 7-zip file, or a RAR file, or even a TAR file, or something like that. And in some cases, it can also be split into multiple parts, as you can see right here. So obviously, if it's just one zip file, you can right-click and extract it. If it's split into multiple parts like this, then make sure all the parts are in the same folder and they all have the same name, so don't rename any of the files. And then just right click on the first part and then you can do extract here if you have WinRAR installed. If you have 7-zip installed instead, you can select the 7-zip option and then select the option to extract here. And that will extract all of the different parts into the one package file itself. And then you can just copy that package file onto the root of a USB drive obviously making sure the USB drive is formatted in the XFAT file system. And then you can go in there and paste your package file. And then of course we could use the package installer inside the debug settings to install it. So that was just one piece of DLC. I also have all of these files here that I'm gonna put into the root of the USB. This is the game, the Black Ops 3 game, along with the 1.26 update for the game, as well as a large DLC pack for the game as well. So two pieces of DLC and an update as well as the original game that I'm going to install. So what you need to know when it comes to installing games, DLC and updates is that your updates and your games and your DLC, they all need to be in what's called fake package format. So there's two different types of package files as I've explained before in previous videos. You've got your retail packages and your fake packages. They both look identical when you download a package file. You can't really tell just by looking at it if it's a fake package file or a retail package file. And retail games, retail packages cannot run on a jailbroken PS4 unless you have the appropriate license tied to your account and it's on the PS4 in order to unlock it. Whereas fake package files are basically decrypted games or decrypted packages that can run on your jailbroken PS4 without the proper license file. Uh, it does not require one. So those are the types of package files that you need to install on your jailbroken PS4 if you want to be able to run them. So one piece of software that can make this easier is this program called PS4 Package Viewer by Lman. If I basically open up this file right here, this program, and then drag one of the package files inside, you can see it gives you some interesting information. It tells you down here in the bottom left hand corner if it's a fake package file or a retail package file and it, along with other information. And what I would recommend doing with this is download this program. All the links will be down in the video description. And then what you need to do is basically make it the default program to open package files with. So store it somewhere on your computer right here. And then on the actual package file, you just want to like double click it and it should say there's no program associated with this file. Do you want to select one? and then you can select one or you can right click on it and go to open with and then choose another app. And when you do that, you can then go to more apps, scroll down to the bottom and then look for another app on this PC. So we've got PS4 package viewer by Lman here and we're gonna select it, click open. And then when, when we do that, every time we double click a package file, it should just open it automatically in that program. So you can quickly check to see if it's a fake package file or not. There's a few other things you need to note as well if we open the game package file. So firstly, not only are you know retail packages not able to run, you cannot mix and match uh, package files either. So you can't have a game that's a fake package file and then try and install a retail update for it. That's not gonna work. 
So if it's a fake package game, then you also need the DLC and any updates you want to install for it. They also need to be a fake package file as well. So they all need to be fake package files. That's the first thing. The second thing is they need to all be under the same region. As you can see, this is for the European version, EU. Uh, also tells you in the content ID, EP is for EU. Uh, there's like UP for US and JP for Japan. You can still run any region package file you want on your jailbroken PS4. So even though I'm in uh, Europe, I can still install like a US package file and the game will run just fine. Same with a Japanese one. It would just work no problem. The issue is that if the game is, say, the European version like this one, then any updates and any DLC that you want to install to that game, they also have to be for the European region. Otherwise, they will not successfully install on top of the game if it's for a different region. So that's the second thing. The final thing is that the updates and the DLC also have to have the same title ID as well because there's different versions of games. There's like maybe a you know definitive edition of a game or a special edition of a game and a regular edition of a game and they'll have different title IDs so you can't mix and match those either. So you need to make sure that the game, the update and any DLC packages they're all for the same title ID. So as you can see, this is the Black Ops 3 game right here. It's a fake package file. It's for the European version. And the title ID is 02624. So when I check the uh, Zombie Chronicles DLC package, this is also fake. It's also for the EU version. And it's also for title ID 02624. And again, the same with this 1.26 update. You can see it's a patch. It's a fake package file, EU. And again, the title ID 02624. So this should all work, no problem. So all we have to do now, once you've confirmed that, is you can eject the USB drive and plug it into your PS4, if it would actually allow me to eject it properly. And another thing as well is that you can of course install these packages through other means. You don't have to use a USB drive. I did do a previous video showing you multiple ways you could install package files over your network using the remote package installer, internal package installer, and package sender apps. So you can install the packages in whatever way you prefer. So switching back over to the PS4 here, we're gonna go onto our internet browser, obviously jailbreak your PS4. So go on your exploit page, whichever one you want to use, and run the gold hen payload to jailbreak your PS4. If you're not understanding what I'm talking about here, then watch my full jailbreak tutorial. It's linked in the playlist link down below. So once you've jailbroken your PS4, we're going to go into the settings menu. We're going to scroll down to the debug settings game package installer, and I'm just going to hit install all, which will install the game, the DLC, the updates. And it doesn't matter which order you install these in. Preferably, you would rather actually install the game first and then install everything else on top. Otherwise, if you install DLC and updates and then the game, sometimes you'll have to go into your notifications and actually tell the pa package files to install. Uh, whereas if you already had the game installed first, it should just do that automatically. Okay, I just skipped forward. We're doing the last file now. There we go. Everything's installed, no problem. If I go ahead and hit options, go to information, you can see we are on version 1.26. So the update was installed successfully and we've got installed add-ons. I can view the add-ons and we get the, the bonus map that's installed. Not sure why it's not showing the other map pack, but it should be installed. So let's give this a try. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. Ah, there we go. So when I ran it there, it just installed the add-on. That's that little bit I talked about before where sometimes if you install an add-on or an update first and then you install the game, it doesn't apply initially until you start running the game or until you go into your notifications and tell the, the downloaded up update to install. Uh, that can happen sometimes, but it just installed there when we launched the game. And as you can see, we have them all installed. By default, Shadows of Evil is the only option in here, I'm pretty sure. So all of these other maps here are all DLC, downloadable content, and we have them all installed there, no problem. So, so as you can see, everything is working there, no problem. I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that now. Okay, so that was an example of a game that installed absolutely fine with the update and DLC, no issues. However, the next thing I'm gonna show you is a bug that can happen when installing an update. So if we head into the debug settings game package installer, I've gone ahead and put two new package files on the root of my USB drive. We have uh, Resident Evil 3, the full game, and an update for Resident Evil 3, 
uh, which is update version 1.5 or 1.05. So we're going to go ahead and install this now. So we'll go ahead and install the game first. Okay, so that's the game finished up installing there. Now we'll try and install this 1.05 update or 1.5 update, whatever it is. 1.05, I believe. Okay, there you go. Has, an error has occurred, basically. It just cannot install the update. Okay, so switching over to the computer, we can open this up in Package Viewer. And all three of these things match. That's the strange thing. So the game is a fake package game. It's the European version. And as you can see, the title ID is 14123. And if we look at the actual patch, it's also a fake package file. It's also for the European version. And it's also... CUSA14123, the title ID is the same. So it should have worked theoretically. It should have patched the game. For some reason, it hasn't. And this is what can happen if you get your games and your updates from different sources. So to try and avoid this as much as possible, you should try and get everything from the same place. So wherever you got the game, that's where you want to get the update from and any DLC from. But obviously you can't do that all the time. Sometimes you'll get the game from one place and then the update is only available somewhere else. And that's when you can run into these incompatibility issues even with everything matching. There is a fix for this, but I'm going to show you guys how to get it set up. It does take a little while though to, to get this to work because... So the reason that this happens is because the update that was built here for 1.05 was built on top of a slightly different version of the game to this actual game itself, this package file. It was built on a different package. So because of that, it creates this weird incompatibility issues, which is why you need to get things from the same source if you can. But there is a fix where we basically have to, what's known as remarry the package file, the game update package file to our version of the game instead of the version of the game that it was originally created for. And then it should actually work and successfully install, providing everything else matches, obviously, the European version, the title ID, and that it's a fake package file. So in order to do this, we need a few different programs. Obviously, everything will be linked in the description. I'm just going to go ahead and do it here on my USB drive. So we'll create a folder here called Repackager or something. And we'll just copy these files into this folder. And then what we need to do is we need to get this T42 Repackager script. And we're just going to drag this in where our package files are and then double click it to run it. It will fail the first time, but it should create a bunch of directories in this folder. So what we need to do is also download a few other things. Go into the bin folder and download this gen gp4 file and copy that into the bin folder. You also need the fake package tools. And in the fake package tools, you're going to need the orbispubcmd.exe file and this ext folder. And you're going to want to copy those also into this bin folder right here. Then you're going to want to put the game package file in the game folder. So this is the full game inside the game folder. And then the update package file, you're going to want to put in the patch folder. Then we're going to run the CMD again, the script again. And as you can see, it's now working. And this basically automates the whole process for you. So it's basically just rebuilding the update again. It's extracting the update and then it's rebuilding it but it's using the base game package file that we have as the you know base package file to build the update from. And therefore, it should make it compatible with our version of the game this time. So luckily, this is a fairly small patch, so it's not taking too long. Large updates that are 20 gigabytes or more. Obviously, this is going to take some time. You might want to go get a coffee or something. So as you can see, if we go into the repack folder, this is where the outputted package file is being built. It has the dash repack at the end to show that it is the repackaged update. Okay, there we go. Once it's done, you can see it says press any key to continue. That will close the command prompt. And now we have our repackaged update file. So all we have to do is take that update file and put it back into the root of the USB drive. And then we can reinstall that back onto the PS4 and it should successfully patch the game this time. Okay, so back on the PS4, you can see Resident Evil 3. We're still on the base version 1.00. So now we'll go into settings, debug settings, game, package installer, and install the repacked update. And okay, it says same content already exists because of the previous one we installed, but even though it downloaded or it installed, it didn't actually install to the game. So we'll just say yes. 
to overwrite that one and install this one instead. And there we go, installed successfully this time. And if we go to information, you can see we're now updated to version 1.05 and we can run the game. And as you'll hopefully be able to see, it should run no problem at all. And there it is. As you can see, the game is indeed running here and it is working. So, so yeah, that's, that's the basics of it. That's how you install games, DLC and updates. You just got to make sure all the package files you're installing for a game are for the same version, same region, same title ID. They're all fake package files. And preferably you want to get them all from the same source so that you don't run into that error message when installing updates uh, where it refuses to install it because it came from a different place. In which case it's fixable though. You can use the uh, repackager script to remarry the update to the base game and then reinstall it and it should work. So there is a workaround if you run into that problem, but preferably you don't want to run into that problem. So try and get everything from the same source if you can. So anyway, that's all for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and stay tuned for more tutorials in this series. I'll have another one out very, very soon. And obviously, if you haven't watched any of the previous videos that are in the series already, check the playlist link down in the video description and at the end of the video here. So Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.